What's up guys, this is Chris from Honest Outlaw and today we have another top five for you. Today though, we're gonna be talking about five guns that I would never carry. Now there's varying reasons for this, but one of the main reasons is obviously reliability issues, but there's others that will come along with that as well. The good news is it won't be a totally negative video. For every gun that I won't carry, I'll give you actually the reasons why, and then I'll also give you some competitive options that I think are significantly better for a similar price. So if you're interested in that gun, I can steer you more toward a gun that might work better for you and what you're using it for. That being said, this is a list of my own opinions. They are educated opinions, but they are still my opinions. They're also based on reviews that I have done that were a sample size of one. They were the sample that I had. I also took in consideration other people's experiences. However, the majority of my opinions is based on the experiences that I have myself at my range under the controlled environments that I understand. Now, before we get into the video, I do want to mention my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you we can buy guns like this and uh, torture myself in front of you guys for your personal entertainment and education. If you want to support the channel, all you got to do is go to the link in the description and sign up. Also in that description is a link to a local shelter in Ames, Iowa. It's the YSS. It could really use your help. So go down to that link and donate to those kids. And finally, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, Canadips. Canadips is a CBD dip that you can actually use in place of something worse like tobacco or anything like that. Canadips is completely tobacco and nicotine free and it gives you all the added health benefits of CBD while tasting pretty good. And from a guy that used to chew for 10 years straight, this is actually a pretty cool product. We actually have a deal going on with them right now where you get 30% off any Cali roll if you use the code outlaw all you have to do is click the link in the description below the cali roll gets you all five core flavors including mint mango citrus american spice and wintergreen my personal favorite is actually the mango or citrus candidates are straight out of the hills of humboldt county california and they are a proudly american company that provides cbd products that actually work click the link below and use the code outlaw for 30 percent off all right with all that said, let's get right into number five here with a pretty popular gun for this year. So we're gonna start off with a little controversy, but we're gonna be talking about the Smith & Wesson CSX, one of the highest sold firearms of the year, somehow, um, made by the same company that makes the Shield, which is arguably my favorite carry gun. And this gun's actually pretty similar to a Shield. It's kind of a single action Smith & Wesson Shield. So I thought it would be amazing because I'm a huge 1911 fan and I was very excited for this gun. And I was like, man, they're finally doing it. They're finally coming out with like a competitive, lightweight, polymer framed, single action gun that I can carry and be comfortable with and shoot very accurately with. Because the advantages of a single action trigger are that it's generally lighter and then your safety is not a trigger it's actually just a manual safety that it has 1911 designs usually work very well because they've been around for a long time spoiler alert they've been around since 1911 and they are generally the most ergonomic and proficient for me personally I love the shield so I was interested in the single action version that being said a lot of problems with the CSX I have a thousand round review of it I have a first shots of it if you're interested it is a polymer frame pistol with 12 plus 1 capacity 3 inch barrel 19 ounce overall weight and a pretty competitive price of $605 and that's sort of where the good news ends. It's not very accurate because the trigger has a lot of issues especially with getting hung up in rapid fire. It wasn't overly reliable either in my personal experience but the main reason why I wouldn't carry it is just simply because it's a less reliable less accurate version of a shield which I already own. Like if you're interested you can get the shield plus performance center for about the same price and it's a significantly better gun with a better trigger a lighter trigger that's the other thing about the csx the single action design is very pros and cons worthy where you get a lighter trigger but you have to defeat a manual safety and that lighter trigger allows you a better degree of accuracy on average per shooter but the CSX, you have to defeat a manual safety to get a trigger worse than it's already on the shield without a manual safety. So it kind of defeats the whole purpose of having the gun. And on top of that, it has a trigger safety on it, which really messes up your rate of fire because it, uh, it makes you reset the trigger further than you think you would have to. In, in long strings of fire, I never had a situation where that had messed me up a little bit. So for me personally, I don't see a reason for it. And just that's why I would never carry it. But don't get me wrong, it's by far the best gun on this list. In at number four is going to be a gun that I just shot the other day, and that is the SCCY CPX-2. That gun, I actually have in front of me right here, and it is the cheapest gun in the gun store, and that was gonna be my video. I wanted to buy the cheapest gun in the gun store and just see how it goes, because this is one of the highest selling firearms of uh, the last few years as well. That being said, it couldn't have gone worse for me. Oh boy. Well, the trigger reset on this is the longest I've ever felt. 
I got a bunch of frag coming back at me mm -hmm. from the port where the double action hammer is. I can get in blowback to my face like this gun is suppressed. Mm. That's weird. It was one of the least accurate, least reliable guns we've had on the channel, and it really lived up to its price point. There's a lot of guns in its category that I would consider better even for less money, even though this is like $250, I reviewed not one, but two high points now on the channel, and both of them performed not only uh, better in the accuracy department, but in the reliability department than this gun did. We had a lot of hangups. We had some gas blowback coming at us. We had a ton of reliability problems. I couldn't shoot less than a two inch group at seven yards. My wife couldn't hit an IPSC target at 10 yards with the damn thing. Uh, the trigger resets abysmal. The rate of fire is terrible. Overall, the build quality is pretty bad. I literally, if I came up with a, a checklist of things that I wouldn't want in a gun, this would hit all of them. So overall, maybe you have a good version of this gun. Maybe there's a lot of people who like this gun, but personally, I don't know if there was a gun that I've shot in the last few years that I hated more than this one. So if you're in the market for a $250 to $300 gun, the MSRP is around $300. You can get a lot of gun uh, for that price point. I would look at the Taurus G3 series. I've had really good luck with most of those. A couple of bobbles here and there with some of the other ones. That being said, they're much more shootable, much lower recoil, better trigger, and they're more reliable than this gun is. So I gotta go with a big no on the CPX-2. In at number three, we have a gun that I have hated for years. And I like to throw it in there on almost every bad list I have just because A, they ruined my childhood, Remington, I'm looking at you, and B, it was the first really, really bad handgun I've ever purchased. And we're gonna be talking about the Remington RP9. Not only is it a little bit too big for carry, but it was very, very unreliable. The trigger was abysmal. It was very hard to shoot the gun accurately. We had a, a number of reliability problems. But the biggest reason why I wouldn't carry the RP9 is because of its size to weight ratio and its competitive market position. So the Remington RP9 is a striker fired pistol with an 18 plus one capacity, uh, 26 ounce overall weight and a 4.5 inch barrel. Think Glock 17 size pistol and think the fact that the gun comes out for around 400 ish dollars, which puts it in the same price point as the Canik TP9 series, for example, one of the best guns that you can buy for the money it comes in right around that same price the IWI Masada is another gun that comes in right around that price place which is a significantly better gun you can get an M&P 2.0 for around that price significantly better gun and then we can also get into some of the cheaper Walters and Gen 3 Glocks and things like that all of those guns are going to outperform the RP9 in every category from accuracy to reliability to durability to customer service pick a thing and they'll beat it so overall, I would recommend you stay away from the RP9 unless you're looking for malfunction clearance practice, in which case, it's a pretty good way to go. All right, now that the farm equipment parade has passed, in number two, with the Car CW380. Now, I'm gonna start by saying car fans are loyal. I've done a couple of videos on this gun and it was a terrible experience shooting it. The Car CW380 is the cheaper version of the Car series of pistols, I believe. I haven't actually shot this gun in like seven years. But the gun comes with a double action trigger, uh, it's a 2.5 inch barrel, 6 plus 1 with only a 10.2 ounce overall weight. It's Palmer framed, very, very compact, very lightweight, very small handgun. And that's one of the main reasons why I personally wouldn't carry it is because of this. I am six foot four and I can barely hold on to that gun to shoot it. And when I do shoot it, it malfunctions on me nonstop. The double action only trigger pull is a lot better than uh, the SCCY. That being said, it's a more expensive gun and it's just as inaccurate for me personally. Not only that, but it's in 380, so it's a caliber that I'm not usually comfortable carrying unless it's my Glock 42 just because I love that little gun. But the car 
really, really is the best that the 2000s could do. And the 2010s, 2020s is really the decade of the compact pistol. It's really where they started to perfect carry guns. And because it's so far behind the curve, there's been a lot of guns introduced lately that are so much better, uh, including the, what is it, the LCP Plus by Ruger, which we're gonna review here in a little bit. Uh, it's got like a 12 plus one magazine capacity with the same size of gun with a striker fired trigger that would blow the car out of the water. They've got the Glock 42, obviously, but really the thing that puts the car th CW380 to bed is gonna be the slew of nine millimeter compact guns that are just better in quality, performance, ballistic capability, capacity, and overall build quality in my personal opinion. If, if you look at the car CW, sometimes they can be found for 300, sometimes they can be found for four or five or even $600. Uh, just really depends on where you find them. It's usually about 500. And for $500, you can find a pretty impressive gun. I mean, you can get a uh, shield for around that same price. You can get a uh, SIG P365. You can get that Taurus GX4. But if you're talking about 380s, I would really look into the Ruger LCP series. I like that a lot. It's very, it's very small, yet relatively shootable and pretty reliable. But the overall favorite in the, in the 380 uh, lineup for me personally is going to be the Glock 42, just because it's a lot easier for me to shoot. Now, the CW380 was very unreliable, but that's really the only knock I can give it as far as the design goes. Everything else is really personal preference. The gun was just too small for me. The trigger sucked. The trigger guard was too small for me to use with gloved hands. And overall, it was a very uncomfortable comfortable shooting gun for me personally, so I would never carry it. I would literally rather have a knife than that gun. At least I know it's gonna work all the time. All right, I did save the best for last. The one ring to rule them all, Sauron's gun himself. This is the Taurus PT-22. Now, this is an 11 ounce Beretta Tomcat inspired 22 long rifle that I actually know several people that have carried this gun in the past. And this thing is probably the least well-performing carry gun I've ever reviewed. Let's see if I can hit some stuff here. Oh, already. And we have a malfunction. That did not take long. It's the good news is, hard. is that it kind of fell apart. Oh. Well, uh -oh. that's new. It already malfunctioned. Yes, it did. All right, so I figured I'd let you know that while loading this mag, uh, the base plate broke off and uh, the spring shot everywhere. And for obvious reasons, that doesn't do very well for the uh, magazine. So yeah, the magazine's non-functional. At least it only came with one. So that way, you now essentially have a single shot, providing this doesn't have a magazine disconnect and then you have zero shots. Part of that is because of its ballistic capability. If you do even hit the target, it's only 22. Part of that is because it's wildly unreliable. Part of that is because it's wildly inaccurate. But a lot of it is also due to user-induced malfunctions because the battery of arms is very difficult to not only learn if you're a new shooter, but particularly to master. <laughs> Oh. So what we have here is a design revolving around arthritic hands or people that can't run a slide very well. So it's actually a magazine fed, like breech open design. And that's definitely the coolest part about the pistol. And that's literally why I bought it. I went to the gun store and this thing was sitting there and uh, my buddy Elliot from Mr. Guns was like, look at this. And he popped that open, I was like, well, I gotta have that, clearly. So the idea behind that is since it's difficult for elderly people or small stature people to run a slide on occasion, uh, and you're, you're not interested in buying a good gun like the Smith & Wesson uh, EZ, you could go after something like this, where you just load around into the tube, pop it shut, have a loaded magazine, and load that in there, and after you fire your first round, it will just then cycle and continue running them. The problem with that is it doesn't work very well. <laughs> The controls are very hard to use. The gun is very hard to close when it's loaded, which sort of defeats the purpose, right? Because if you're trying to make a gun easy to load, and that's the whole design of the gun, you might wanna actually make the gun easy to load in practical use, not just in theory. Um, it's relatively big, 
uh, considering the caliber and capacity that it has, it's eight plus one of 22 long rifle. And I know this is, it looks like a little gun, but if you put it up against, again, like a Ruger 380 or maybe a Glock 42, they're actually similar in size and you get much more reliability, accuracy, capability with those guns than you get with this piece of crap. On top of that, it's also made by Taurus, which is just super. So if anything goes wrong with it, uh, you're probably shit out of luck. I know their customer service is a little bit 50-50. They've been great for me, but you have to understand that I am an internet personality that reviews guns, so they have an invested interest in being nice to me, whereas they don't with you. So keep that in mind when you're buying this gun, uh, that the controls are relatively sticky. Uh, it's very, very unreliable. Uh, it's hard to use. The trigger's abysmal. Uh, the accuracy is poor. You literally have like a one inch barrel on a 22, so you couldn't find a more ballistically inferior gun even if you tried. And overall, it might look cool, but the reality of this gun is it's better left in the safe or at the gun store before you even buy the damn thing. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you wanna see more stuff like this, let me know in the comment section below. And if you're interested in seeing what I would actually recommend, we did just do a top seven of my favorite carry guns. So if you're interested in seeing some of the best carry guns on the market, that's a good way to go. Check you later.